Welcome to the Experts in Sport podcast, brought to you by the School of Sport, Exercise and Health Sciences at Loughborough University. This podcast seeks to bring together the worlds of academia and professional practice. If you're interested in the latest research and trends in sport and want to hear from experts from around the world, then subscribe now because this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Martin Foster, Applied Sport Management Lead at Loughborough University. Today, I'm with our regular guest, Dr. Martin Lindley, and we're joined by Dr. Stephen Bailey, Senior Lecturer in Sport and Exercise Nutrition at Loughborough University. Stephen has published over 80 original research articles. He has delivered invited presentations at the British Association of Sport and Exercise Sciences, European College of Sports Sciences, and the American College of Sports Medicine's annual conference. And today we're here to discuss the influence of nitrate supplementation on exercise performance. So, hi Stephen, hi Martin, how are you? Hi Martin, all hey. good, thank you. Good. All good, thanks. Very good. So today, I'm going to take a bit of a back seat and allow Martin and Stephen to discuss the influence of nitrate supplementation on exercise performance. I might chip in with a few questions that our listeners might be interested in, but for now, it's over to you, Martin. Okay, thank you, Martin. Hi, Steve. Hi, Martin. Well, the, the opening question really is, is nitrates what is it? So, so nitrate is, is basically a negatively charged uh, molecule and it's, it's had quite an interesting journey really in terms of traditionally it's been considered almost a, a negative molecule or, or somewhat inert in terms of not having much of an effect in the body. But in more recent times, it's now been appreciated that, that nitrate can in fact be uh, converted into nitrite and then on into a molecule called nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is a very important molecule in biology because it can have a positive influence on a wide array of biological processes. So, for example, it can open up the blood vessels, allowing more uh, blood and therefore oxygen and nutrients to be delivered to the muscle during exercise. It's been shown to have a role in mitochondrial function. It's been shown to have a role in muscle contractile function. So if you can increase nitric oxide within the body, possibly by supplementing with, with nitrate, then, then that gives us an opportunity potentially to use a dietary intervention to improve uh, exercise performance. But also there's, there's, there's important implications for health as well. So potentially the most well-documented is, is that the opening in the, the blood vessels will cause a reduction in blood pressure. So there's, there's been quite a lot of research out there showing improvements, particularly in vascular health, uh, after uh, supplementation with nitrate. So, so there is implications with this intervention to potentially improve aspects of health and also potentially to improve performance as well. So it, it's had a, a nice journey from moving from a molecule that was potentially considered a little bit negative or neutral to, to something that might have a positive effect on, on health and performance. Okay, that's quite a nice little uh, synopsis of the, the journey of nitrate. The listeners here will include quite a lot of elite athletes who are in lockdown at the moment. So we're talking about nitrate, we're talking about nitrate, nitrite and nitric oxide. Can we put it into a bit of a context of, of food and dietary supplements to see how they would recognize nitrate and what it can do? Yeah, sure. So, so nitrate, the, the main dietary source of nitrate, around 60 to 80 percent, comes in the form of, of uh, vegetables. But it's not all vegetables that are equal in nitrate. It's particularly the green leafy vegetables and also beetroot as well. So beetroot is probably the most recognized nitrate-rich food because that's what most of the studies have used as the dietary nitrate supplement. But in terms of, of, of other dietary sources, it's quite rich in, in lettuce, uh, particularly rocket, uh, in some cabbages, uh, radish, um, celery, uh, cress, spinach, so particularly green leafy vegetables are, are a very rich source of, of dietary nitrate. And, and it's, it's well documented that obviously having your uh, five a day of fruit and vegetables is, is good for your health, but, but there's also some good evidence that the green leafy vegetables are potentially even, uh, you know, they might confer even greater effects on, on health. So if athletes are interested in, in increasing their dietary nitrate intake, and then the best way to do that is, is to basically create yourself quite a large salad, really. That, that would be uh, the, the best way to get this into your diet naturally. We, we heard from uh, Mike Gleason and Letty Bishop in previous podcasts about the benefits of a healthy diet in general and a very wide-ranging diet. Where would you see sort of nitrates and 
beetroot or leafy green vegetables fitting into that in the current lockdown? I mean, we're getting problems with getting access to our usual normal diet. Are there any specific foods you direct them to or would you think more likely to go for a supplementation? I think in my recent trips to the supermarket, it's flour and, and uh, toilet roll and other things like that we've been struggling to get our hands on. I've, I've not really seen in my own experience so far any shortage of, of, of lettuce and, and salad type products. So, so again, if the, if the listeners are interested in, in trying to boost their dietary nitrate intake, it, it's trying to get uh, as much green leafy vegetables, spinach, salad um, into the system as possible. So if, if, if the listeners want to achieve that, it should be feasible when, when they go to the shop uh, supermarket to do their, their their shopping really so a nice a nice wide varied diet with lots of different vegetables in focusing on the green leafies that's, all, that's always good to know the nutritionist will be happy with us giving that advice yes and i think the other thing as well to, to mention with, with from the dietary point of view is some of the early studies with nitrate administered it as a nitrate salt such as sodium or potassium nitrate and, and they saw some effects there but they've done some interesting studies where they've compared the same dose of nitrate as a salt or the same dose of nitrate administered as a food such as beetroot or spinach and they've seen better improvements in blood pressure and exercise economy when you give the nitrate in a food source and that's, that, again, lends support to your point about taking it in in, in a dietary form. And, and some of the reasons we believe that might be the case is, is some of the foods contain other nutrients that might interact with nitrate and nitrite to aid its metabolism down into nitric oxide. So, so again, you can, if you want to, buy over the internet something like uh, potassium nitrate salt, but I wouldn't advise that because, as I said, you won't get the same benefits if you take the equivalent amount of nitrate, but, but in a food source. So there's, there's extra nutrients in the food, such as polyphenols, antioxidants that can, can aid the reductive chemistry to drive the nitrate down into, into nitric oxide. So again, taking it in the diet is, is the best way to, to achieve benefits with this. Sorry, just, just when you're talking about diet, what kind of um, volumes are we talking? You know, we're saying leafy greens and some beetroot. Are we, how much? Yeah, so this, this is one of the, the challenges with the intervention. So this is why we use the concentrated beetroot juice shot because if if you take 70 mils of of the concentrated beetroot juice shot the, the latest ones are giving you in excess of around about 400 milligrams of nitrate to achieve that in terms of salad you'd be looking at you know two to three hundred grams of of lettuce which is obviously quite a large amount so that's the reason in terms of a research setting that we use the beetroot juice shots is it's just a very quick convenient and easier way to get the nitrate into someone but that doesn't mean to say that if you do have you know a reasonably large salad either for your lunch or split over lunch and dinner that you can't see some positive health benefits with a slightly uh, lower dose Okay, so we've got the recommendation, as it were, which it matches what we've talked about previously in other podcasts of this wide, varied diet and making sure we've got a good, healthy mix of foods in large volumes across the day. If we focus it back onto why people would be wanting to do that, for instance, we have you've mentioned health benefits and you've mentioned a little bit about exercise, yes. but as an elite athlete, what are the benefits to me? to increasing my nitrates, to eating my healthy salads, to doing the beetroots, etc. How specifically is it going to help me or who's it going to help? Is it going to help the, the, the gym weightlifting power athlete or is it helping the long distance runner? Yeah, so that, that's a good question there. Then we can break that down really into, you've mentioned different types of athletes in terms of what type of sports or activities they engage with. And you've also mentioned their kind of competitive standard. So if we first take kind of lesser trained athletes or so your, your kind of general gym users or, you know, your, your kind of five-a-side football players, if we take the, the lesser trained athletes first, and if we consider lesser trained endurance athletes, what some of the early studies showed is that nitrate supplementation was able to improve exercise tolerance. So individuals were able to exercise for around about 16% longer during a time to exhaustion test. And they were also able to show an improvement in exercise economy when, when doing low intensity exercise. So that is, it was costing them less oxygen 
and therefore energy to go, to cycle at the same submaximal work rate. And we know that exercise economy is is obviously a very important determinant of, of long distance in endurance performance. So with lesser trained athletes, just your recreational standard athletes, there is evidence that nitrate supplementation can make you more economical and can improve your endurance performance. If we then start to think about more intermittent sports, so this applies then to typically your team sports or your racket sports, football, rugby, netball, so on, tennis. What some of the literature has shown us as well is that nitrate supplementation also has the potential to improve performance in these types of, of sports as well. So uh, one of the most commonly used uh, intermittent assessments for football, for example, is the yo-yo intermittent shuttle test. And, and nitrate supplementation has been shown to improve performance in that context as well. And then finally, if we look at then more kind of really strength, explosive speed type tasks, there's also some evidence there to suggest that nitrate supplementation supplementation uh, can be beneficial. So to summarize for kind of recreational athletes, the overall picture of the literature is it can be beneficial in enhancing most aspects of, of exercise performance. Now, when we move that question over to elite performers, the the evidence is less kind of positive, if you like. And, and to some extent, that makes sense because obviously if you're dealing with elite athletes, their system is already finely tuned. So it's very difficult to make any intervention see large improvements in this population. And in particular, the endurance athletes, most of the literature that's looked at very well-trained endurance athletes shows most of them don't respond in a a positive way in terms of boosting their performance. It doesn't make their performance worse, but it just doesn't have a meaningful effect. However, but if you look at some of the, the papers when they report the individual data, one or two of the, the participants report meaningful improvements in performance. So some individuals can respond in a positive way, but the proportion of responders will be a lot less in elite endurance athletes. If we then focus at well-trained intermittent athletes, so they've done some studies with, with well-trained football players, and again, looked at intermittent uh, running performance. And in this population, they've seen some, uh, some positive effects on, on high-intensity intermittent running performance in well-trained football players. So, so to summarize that, that for you, it seems that if you're a recreational active individual or not very trained, nitrate has the potential to boost performance in more settings. If you're a well-trained endurance athlete, it might work, but it's not going to work for most athletes. Whereas if you're more a, a repeated sprint type athlete engaging in team sports, it seems that has the potential to improve performance in, in very well-trained intermittent performers. Okay, thanks. That's a, that's a really nice little summary you put together for all the different levels of athletes. If if we shifted it into the context of our current situation, so those, uh, for instance, those elite endurance runners who are at the top of the game, they're Olympic qualifiers, they're pushing the limits, they've actually had their training reduced because they yes. can't train as easily. They're not competing. I mean, we spoke with Letty Bishop about that. The reduced in volume was actually beneficial to their immune system. If, if those individuals are no longer as optimal as they were, could they be sliding down the scale towards the more the less trained individuals and therefore some type of nitrate increase might actually help them in their return to training or regaining that high level? Yeah, that, that's a, a good question and it is theoretically possible, but no one's looked at that question. I mean, people have looked at assessing elite performers when they're obviously competing or when they're training at a high standard. No one's looked, for example, on, for example, how they recover after their off season and when they first start training, does that allow them to get back to their full competitive training load faster and with, for example, lower symptoms of, of muscle damage, for example. And that's one interesting aspect of, of the beetroot juice, for example. Then Tom Clifford, who's, who's obviously joined us recently at Loughborough, has shown that the beetroot juice, in addition to nitrate, has other components of it, uh, such as polyphenols, that, that might aid recovery from, from exercise. So if they become slightly unaccustomed to doing uh, their, their full training sessions, it might aid their recovery uh, between sessions, which, which, might, which might expedite their, their, their kind of getting back to their, their full training load. There is some evidence in lesser trained individuals, again, that nitrate supplementation can boost some of the adaptations to training. So if you take people who are recreational active, again, they seem to respond positively in terms of 
their training response is greater if they consume nitrate at the same time compared to just doing the same training without nitrate. Now, whether that would apply for elite athletes as well is an interesting point, but I don't think there's anything to say it would make their training adaptations worse. So, so it would certainly be something they could they could pilot with and, and try. So a, a sort of firm recommendation to keep that leafy green vegetables, wide varied diet and nitrate sources nice on, on, a, on a nice high level. Steve, Stephen, is there any, um, has there been research around people's current eating habits and their current diet? Because is this, is it potentially that people's nitrate levels are low and therefore boosting them or just getting up to normal levels is what's enhancing it? Or is this saying that it's, eating above a certain level so yeah where, where the amount of nitrate that we're giving them is 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 quite large so the the one study that might be useful to talk about there is that they did a review of of elite athletes by a, by a dutch group that was published i think about two or three years ago now where they looked at dietary nitrate intake and actually elite athletes seem to take on board a little bit more nitrate than the general population for for two reasons one they often t- consume more food to support their training they need obviously a lot more calories and different types of nutrients but often now elite athletes are eating quite well so so they're naturally taking on board a lot more nitrate rich foods and and particularly if you've got you know vegan athletes now which is obviously becoming quite popular if they're consuming more plant-based products then their chance of consuming more nitrate will will be a little bit higher but that it's unlikely that they can can that they're going to consume enough in their normal diet to to maximize the the potential of nitrate. There's still potential to to supplement with, for example, a beetroot juice shot to to increase the the nitrate and nitrite levels in the body to a, to a greater extent that might improve their performance. And just another quick question: Who, Who's our friend in the background who's shouting and crying? Mine, mine is staying quiet. Oh, sorry, yeah, don't, um, worry. Yeah. don't worry. Don't <laughs> worry. We just wanted to say hello to them on the podcast. <laughs> oh that, no, that's my son. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We're trying to feed him beetroot. He doesn't like it. So, <laughs> so just so everybody's aware, we, we normally do these in the studios, but with the lockdown, we're, we're obviously not. So uh, there may be kids running in throughout any of these. So don't worry. I wasn't making you conscious of that. Just thought we'd say hello. That's all. Yeah, no, he, he's okay. It's, uh, it's his lunchtime, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, if 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 we talk about his lunchtime or the what we're looking at as far as getting the nitrates into the system, you talk eloquently there about the different types of athletes and how they might benefit but can you give us a bit more of a, of a mechanism if it, say we're increasing nitrate in the diet what how are we actually changing so if i'm an, an elite olympic athlete i'm going to really want to know what's happening inside my body what's the actual mechanism that's going to try and aid performance yeah sure so so nitrate itself is not really believed to be what's causing the effect so if you if you just consume nitrate and you were unable to metabolize it 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 seems unlikely that that would cause any meaningful improvements in your physiology or your performance so the the kind of key rate limiting step if you like is after we've we've ingested the nitrate it obviously passes through the stomach into the intestines and then on into the bloodstream This nitrate is then taken up by the salivary glands and then secreted back into the mouth. And then in our oral cavity, specifically on our tongue, we have nitrate-reducing bacteria. Now, these bacteria will reduce the nitrate into nitrite, and this nitrite will then pass back into the stomach, into the bloodstream, and then this can be reduced then down into nitric oxide, which we mentioned at the start is is really the, the molecule that we believe is causing these positive effects after after nitrate supplementation. So to give you a nice example of that, um, and this is one thing that's useful for your listeners to understand, is that there's been some very nice studies done with antibacterial mouthwashes, so particularly the very strong ones. So if anyone's used Corsadil, it leaves that kind of very strong metallic taste in your mouth. It's quite, um, it's quite brutal in terms of its antibac- antimicrobial properties. So They've, st- they've shown some nice evidence that if you take nitrate and then you consume mouthwash in the, the period following that, you won't see the increases in plasma nitrite. So the, the nitrite floating around in the bloodstream isn't as high. You don't see the reductions in blood pressure, and you might also therefore not be expecting to see the same improvements in performance. So that's one thing that people who are interested in nitrate boosting through their diet have to consider is if they're going to take this in and around using antimacterial mouthwash that's going to limit the effects because it's really dependent on this relationship that we share with the the 
the oral bacteria, they reduce the nitrate into nitrite. As humans, we have quite a limited capability to do that. So, so it's the bacteria that are key in driving nitrate reduction into nitrite. This nitrite then passes into the bloodstream where it can be uh, taken up by the muscle tissues and can be um, reduced in the blood itself or reduced in the muscle tissues itself down into nitric oxide. And that's what we believe is, is bringing about the, the, the positive effects. Right. So we, it's uh, back to uh, Professor Gleason's microbiota in the gut and the beneficial symbiotic relationship we have with the body. So yes. you're actually talking about taking in the nitrate, it going through the body and then back up to the mouth, then going through bacteria and then going back into the body. So that's quite yes. a complicated process. Yeah, it's a second pass metabolism. So, so you, you have the first pass, if you like, where the nitrate goes in, comes back through the system up to the salivary glands. This then goes through a second pass metabolism where the nitrate is reduced into nitrite. The nitrite is then swallowed, goes into the bloodstream, goes into the muscle, and can be reduced down into nitric oxide. And, and one of the important things with that last step, the reduction of nitrite into nitric oxide, is the, the conditions that you need to stimulate that reaction is hypoxia so low levels of oxygen and acidosis and interestingly in, in the context of exercise we know that those are two things that develop during exercise we become more hypoxic in the in the muscles and the blood so the oxygen levels decline and we become more selectively at higher intensities of exercise so so exercise seems to create metabolic conditions that actually are more conducive for nitrite being reduced down into into nitric oxide to bring about these effects. These effects that this nitric oxide is, is working on, the general literature and the general knowledge will say that how nitric oxide is good for your health, but how is the nitric oxide actually in impacting the physiology and, and helping the muscles of the athletes that are doing the performance? Yeah, so, so good question. Uh, the mechanisms haven't fully been resolved yet, uh, as is the case in, in, in a lot of aspects of science, which is good. It leaves us plenty to do. So some of the early work suggested that the endurance performance improvements were, might be related to improvements in exercise economy, so allowing you to consume less oxygen uh, when cycling or running at the same power output or velocity. When people delved then a little bit further into the muscle mechanisms of, of what might be causing this there was two initial studies one which showed that the mitochondria were in it a little bit more efficient so they could basically generate energy for us by consuming less oxygen and the second one is that the muscle contraction process itself was actually requiring less energy so we could contract the muscle and generate the same force for a lower energy cost if you like so contractile efficiency had essentially been improved some of the latest evidence is now actually challenging the mitochondria hypothesis. So it seems potentially that nitrate is, is improving aspects of muscle contraction. So some of the, the latest evidence is suggesting that maybe alterations in muscle calcium handling, which is very important for muscle contraction, uh, might be uh, an important candidate mechanism by which nitrate supplementation is improving performance. And then, of course, the other one, relates to potentially to muscle blood flow. So one of the most recognized properties of, of nitric oxide is it opens up blood vessels, causes vasodilation, which allows you to deliver more blood, oxygen, and nutrients down into the, into the tissues. So, so there's potentially aspects related to mitochondrial improvements, uh, the contraction process of the skeletal muscle itself, potentially calcium handling, and also uh, blood flow changes to, to the muscle as well. Those are some of the, the main mechanisms that might be at play to boost performance. Really nice to know that we're, we're delving into the unique properties of molecules and we don't really have the answers tied up as yet, but we're, we're working on them. Yes, absolutely. Well, if we shift this slightly more to the, the health benefits, I mean, you've mentioned previously about a couple of health benefits, but if you could sort of summarize the general health and the links to nitrate and almost putting it into the context of, of where we are at the moment. I mean, everybody's fairly stressed out, mental health and well-beings, you know, everybody's concerned. On as, a, as a general health implication, uh, how do nitrates fit into that situation? So in terms of the, the health effects of, of nitrate, 
I think, as I mentioned at the start, the most recognized health benefit of, of nitrate seems to be linked to improvements in vascular health. So it seems that potentially individuals who've uh, got normal blood pressure can still see small reductions in blood pressure with nitrate. But if individuals have slightly elevated blood pressure, they seem to see larger reductions in blood pressure with nitrate supplementation. And they've also done some work in, in elderly individuals as well. So blood pressure reductions are something that we, uh, we typically see after nitrate supplementation. There's also then improvements in things like arterial stiffness, uh, autonomic control. So various aspects of cardiovascular health seem to be positively affected by by nitrate supplementation. So it's reasonably good evidence that there might be positive effects in that regard. There's also some evidence in terms you mentioned there about stress, for example, it hasn't been looked at in as much detail, but there is some evidence, it's a bit mixed, but you might be able to improve aspects of brain blood flow, for example. You might be able to improve aspects of cognitive function. So those might help people in this uh, circumstance if they're a little bit stressed out. I mean, in terms of the emotional side of things, I don't think anyone's looked at, at it from that perspective. But in terms of brain health, there is some potential there in terms of nitrate potentially having a positive effect on that aspect. And there is also some evidence that it can improve performance uh, in, in boosting metabolic health as well. So most of this has been done at the moment in, in kind of animal models showing uh, improvements in, in metabolic health, but uh, more studies need to be done in, in human models to, to test that. Positive benefits across the board then, health and performance. Uh, are there any, any negative side effects? Are there any downsides to nitrate specifically? Or in, I mean, people, you, you mentioned people taking the beetroot shot, which have a high concentration. Uh, are there any negative side effects in any of the studies that would suggest that there's a, a risk associated with this? Or is this really a, a win-win situation? So I think, yeah, I mean, like with, with all supplements, it's not a case of more is always better, that there is a kind of clear dose-response relationship between these things. So you know, one of the main limitations with, with beetroot is, is obviously its taste. Not everyone likes the taste of, of beetroot juice. I mean, the advantage of the concentrated shots that, that, that are now available is that at least if you don't like it, it's only 70 mils. Whereas when we first started doing these studies, it wasn't concentrated. So you had to drink a pint of beetroot juice to get kind of less concentration than we're getting now. So, so the intervention has, has improved in, in that respect. And one of the main kind of drawbacks is some people don't like the taste of it. And then if they don't like the taste of it and they force force it down themselves essentially then that might introduce a little bit more gi discomfort and and that might actually compromise their performance so so that's one of the the, the main challenge um there, you know there are some individuals as well who like for example if if people already have kidney stones for example um beetroot contains a lot of oxalates um, so that won't help people who've got kidney stones for example so if someone has hypotension, you know, that might present us a slight problem if, if they're going to potentially lower their blood pressure further. However, having said that, it seems that people who see the biggest reductions in blood pressure are those who have a higher blood pressure at the start. So, so I would say most people will be okay to, to take this, but the, the main limitation is, is the taste, and, and it might introduce some, some GI discomfort. The other thing it, it often does as well, is it causes a symptom called beet urea. So it turns your stools and your urine purple. Um, and obviously, sometimes if you see purple urine, people might associate that, that my urine has got blood in it, which is a sign of cancer and other things. So so one thing we always tell the participants is you, you will see a discoloration of stools and urines, but that's not anything to be concerned with. That's that's to do with the, the kind of rich coloring of, of the beetroot. It's got betaines, which obviously give it its bright purple color, and that, that obviously stains uh, some of our bodily uh, fluids. So if, if I've got purple urine, don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, well, if you're taking beetroot, yeah, don't worry. If you've got purple urine and you haven't been taking beetroot, maybe call your GP. Is that, is that, the, is that the take home message? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not. I mean. <laughs> so we've only got a couple of minutes really to go. Would you, would you just be able to concisely, almost, almost condense everything you've just said into like 60 seconds? So your advice, what, what does it do? Uh, who does it work for? How much should they be eating as a take home message? Okay, so, so, 
nitrate is is abundant in green leafy vegetables and and beetroot and if you take this uh, at greater degree in your diet it will lead to an increased production of nitric oxide within your body and that's beneficial because it can cause a, a wide array of of beneficial effects on your body's processes such as improving contractile function of the muscle blood pressure blood flow which might be able to improve health and performance in terms of the individuals who can benefit from this, it seems to boost performance particularly well in, in moderately trained or recreationally active individuals, to a lesser extent in, in very well-trained individuals, particularly endurance athletes. However, it does seem to have potential positive effects on, on intermittent type power athletes as well. So it depends on what type of elite performer you are. In terms of recommendations, what, what we currently recommend with this, if we think of it in terms of beet reduced shots, which is the easiest way for, for people to consume this, taking two beet reducer shots a day, one in the morning, one in the evening for, for seven days, and then on the day of competition, taking the last dose around about two and a half to three hours prior to competition, that would give the individual the best chance of seeing a positive effect of, of nitrate supplementation. That's brilliant. Really brilliant advice. I think uh, something people can take home. I've certainly been enjoying these nutritional podcasts that we've been doing. I think I'm going to either A, improve my diet massively, or I'm going to have a load of supplements and I'm going to have vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, um, probiotics, and beetroot. And if I can't beat my little five mile run time in the next month by doing all that, then I'm coming back to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> right guys really thank you very much for your time um we will we will we'll speak to you all soon excellent thank yeah, you thanks martin stay safe yeah, cheers stay guys Bye. if you'd like to get in contact with dr stephen bailey then he's available at s.bailey2 at alborough.ac.uk or to speak to other academics at loughborough then visit our website www alborough.ac.uk Bye for now. See you next time.